The Israeli military says its forces are on the outskirts of Gaza City. Tanks and soldiers have crossed into the area at three main locations. This marks the deepest incursion into the territory since Israel withdrew from Gaza back in 2005. The Israeli military says 18 soldiers have been killed since the ground offensive began last week. Let's go now to Alan Fisher. He joins us live from occupied East Jerusalem. So what are they saying about the mounting casualties? Uh, we are told that uh, there has been a lot of intense fighting in and around Gaza, that the Israeli forces are finding that they're coming up against anti-tank battalions. They're also coming up against uh, hand grenades being thrown at them and landmines. We know that one of their senior commanders of the armored brigade has been killed. He was a man that was regarded as a hero in Israel because of how he... Uh, turned his troops round on the 7th of October and fought back against Hamas. He has now died. And this comes just a couple of days after the Israelis said that they killed Hamas's main anti-tank organiser. And they said that, that, that this would make things easier as they move further in to the Gaza Strip. But it's clear that the urban fighting that they expected to, to encounter, it's there and, and it's slowing their progress. They might not be moving as fast as many analysts thought they would in the early days of this conflict. And, Alan, we know the US Secretary of State is heading to the region tomorrow. What's expected to be his mission this time? Well, he's coming to find out what Israel's new military objectives are. You remember that Antony Blinken was here twice before the ground war actually started. He will again reiterate his support for Israel and the right to defend themselves as long as they do it within international law, both humanitarian law and the rules of war. And he gave evidence on Capitol Hill earlier this week, and we heard him say that there would be no ceasefire, that that would be a benefit to Hamas. There is some suggestion that he might call for a humanitarian pause, but certainly given his comments earlier this week, that seems unlikely. Now, during that hearing, he said that perhaps the uh, Palestinian Authority could play an enhanced role in governing Gaza after the war. Well, just in the last 30 minutes or so, Hamas has released a statement saying it is rude and arrogant of the United States to try and suggest such a thing, that they reject blatant attempts to intervene and impose a new regime in Gaza itself. Uh, now, we know that Antony Blinken will make meet with senior government figures here. His intention then is to go to Amman in Jordan, where he'll meet uh, King Abdullah there. And then he will go to Turkey and he will speak to uh, the, the president and, and senior members of the Turkey government. Uh, there's always the possibility, as we saw back in October, that Antony Blinken could add steps on to this visit. But clearly his visit here, uh, his visit to Israel on Friday, is going to be uh, the most significant of, of all his discussions. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much, Alan Fisher. Well, Alan Liel is a former director general of the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs and a former Israeli ambassador to South Africa. He joins us now from Tel Aviv. Good to have you with us. So, first of all, do you think Benjamin Netanyahu has made the release of Israeli captives in Gaza a priority? I think uh, it is uh, uh, up on his agenda. But uh, naturally, with the last days of fighting uh, inside the Gaza Strip, uh, all the focus is on the fighting. Uh, but I think the Israeli government has it high on its agenda. Uh, the families are acting uh, also independently. They have headquarters in Tel Aviv of the 232 families. And they are uh, reaching out to the world with the stories of the people in captivity. And they try to send up a message outside Israel and to the Israeli government that they think uh, a deal should be done fast and even uh, using the term all for all. So I'm in uh, almost daily touch uh, with families and trying to help the families as far as we can. Now, over the last few days when we've been speaking and interviewing with Hamas officials, they've said they would be willing to release the Israeli captives 
if Palestinian prisoners could be released, if essential goods could be allowed into Gaza and the bombing could be halted. Do you think that's something of a starting point, at the very least, that Israel could engage with if this government of Benjamin Netanyahu wanted? I can, first of all, I'm not the Israeli government, as you know, and I don't speak on behalf of the Israeli sure, government. but in your perspective or your analysis. No, but, and I can give you uh, my feeling and the feelings of some of the families. Uh, I think what we should try focus on is uh, the term all for all. I think as you tie it to the daily fighting, uh, it is complicated, th complicating things, but uh, I think uh, this term, all for all, should be uh, thoroughly examined. And uh, definitely the families are in favor of it, and the families, as you know, have some clout, and uh, the voice is being heard. And uh, I, I think if we can disassociate uh, these uh, preparations for an exchange from the daily fighting, uh, it will, uh, it might make it easier. I'm glad you mentioned the, the families because as we see an intensification of the airstrikes on Gaza in what Beit Salem, the Israeli human rights group, called in its report a criminal policy of revenge what Amnesty International said on October 19th, that the airstrikes were violations of international law. As families see that this not only claims more and more Palestinian civilian lives, but according to Hamas, also the lives of some of the civilian Israeli captives. Is that pressure going to intensify in turn on the Israeli prime minister? Look, again, I'm taking the angle of the families and only the angle of the families. And the families want the people in captivity released. No definitions now. They are very, very worried as the fighting is inside Gaza and they guess the people are inside Gaza. You can imagine how parents feel about their children and I just came uh, from a meeting with them. They want the people in captivity out, and if it will be done in an exchange, in an exchange. The more we push into it all kind of definitions and all kind of additional conditions beyond the all for all, uh, it, it will not happen. Even the all for all itself is complicated because you don't know who holds who and where and so on. So I think, I think, and this is the feeling I get from the families, that if uh, all sides, including the international community, will try to examine uh, an all-for-all -all exchange, we might make progress. Uh, if we push this issue of people in captivity into the overall picture, it will be much more difficult to arrange any release or exchange. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks so much for your thoughts on that. Thank you.